manufacturing industries. On the occasion of Diwali, Harish went to a market with his parents. They purchased shoes and clothes for him. His mother purchased utensils, sugar, tea and diyas, earthen lamps. Harish observed that the shops in the market were flooded with items for sale. He wondered how so many items could be made in such large quantities. His father explained that shoes, clothes, sugar, etc. are manufactured by machines in large industries. Some utensils are manufactured in small industries. while items like diyas are made by individual artisans in household industry do you have some ideas about these industries production of goods in large quantities after processing from raw materials to more valuable products is called manufacturing do you know that paper is manufactured from wood sugar from sugarcane iron and steel from iron ore and aluminium from bauxite do you also know that some types of clothes are manufactured from yarn which itself is an industrial product people employed in the secondary activities manufacture the primary materials into finished goods the workers employed in steel factories car breweries textile industries bakeries etc fall into this category some people are employed in providing services in this chapter we are mainly concerned with manufacturing industries which fall in the secondary sector the economic strength of a country is measured by the development of manufacturing industries importance of manufacturing manufacturing sector is considered the backbone of development in general and economic development in particular mainly because Manufacturing industries not only help in modernizing agriculture which forms the backbone of our economy they also reduce the heavy dependence of people on agricultural income by providing them jobs in secondary and tertiary sectors industrial development is a precondition for eradication of unemployment and poverty from our country this was the main philosophy behind public sector industries and joint sector ventures in india it was also aimed at bringing down regional disparities by establishing industries in tribal and backward areas export of manufactured goods expand trade and commerce and bring in much needed foreign exchange countries that transform their raw materials into a wide variety of finished goods of higher value are prosperous India's prosperity lies in increasing and diversifying its manufacturing industries as quickly as possible. Agriculture and industry are not exclusive of each other. They move hand in hand. For instance, the agro industries in India have given a major boost to agriculture by raising its productivity. They depend on the later for raw materials and sell their products such as irrigation pumps fertilizers insecticides pesticides plastic and pvc pipes machines and tools etc to the farmers thus development and competitiveness of manufacturing industry has not only assisted agriculturists in increasing their production but also made the production processes very efficient in the present day world of globalization our industry needs to be more efficient and competitive self sufficiency alone is not enough our manufactured goods must be at par in quality with those in the international market only then will we be able to compete in the international market contribution of industry to national economy over the last two decades the share of manufacturing sector has stagnated at 17% of gdp out of a total of 27% for the industry which includes 10% for mining coring electricity and gas this is much lower in comparison to some east asian economies where it is 25 to 35% The trend of growth rate in manufacturing over the last decade has been around 7% per annum.
the desired growth rate over the next decade is 12%. Since 2003, manufacturing is once again growing at the rate of 9 to 10 percent per annum. With appropriate policy interventions by the government and renewed efforts by the industry to improve productivity, economists predict that manufacturing can achieve its next target over the next decade. The National Manufacturing Competitiveness Council NMCC, has been set up with this objective. Industrial Location Industrial locations are complex in nature. These are influenced by availability of raw material, labor, capital, power and market, etc. It is rarely possible to find all these factors available at one place. Consequently, manufacturing activity tends to locate at the most appropriate place where all the factors of industrial location are either available or can be arranged at lower cost. After an industrial activity starts, urbanization follows. Sometimes industries are located in or near the cities. Thus, industrialization and urbanization go hand in hand. Cities provide markets and also provide services such as banking, insurance, transport, labor, consultants and financial advice, etc. to the industry. Many industries tend to come together to make use of the advantages offered by the urban centers known as agglomeration economies. Gradually, a large industrial agglomeration takes place. In the pre-independence period, most manufacturing units were located in places from the point of view of overseas trade such as Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, etc. Consequently, there emerged certain pockets of industrially developed urban centers surrounded by a huge agricultural, rural hinterland. The key to decision of the factory location is the least cost. Government policies and specialized labor also influence the location of industry. Classification of industries List the various manufactured products you use in your daily life such as transistors, electric bulbs, vegetable oil, cement, glassware, petrol, matches, scooters, automobiles, medicines and so on. If we classify the various industries based on a particular criterion, then we would be able to understand their manufacturing better. Industries may be classified as follows. On the basis of source of raw materials used, agro-based cotton, woolen, jute, silk, textile, rubber and sugar, tea, coffee, edible oil, mineral-based, Iron and steel, cement, aluminium, machine tools, petrochemicals. According to their main role, basic or key industries are those which supply their products as raw materials to manufacture other goods. Example, iron and steel and copper smelting, aluminium smelting. Consumer industries that produce goods for direct use by consumers, sugar, toothpaste, paper, sewing machines, fans, etc. On the basis of capital investment, a small-scale industry is defined with reference to maximum investment allowed on the assets of a unit. This limit has changed over a period of time. At present, the maximum investment allowed is Rs 1 crore. On the basis of ownership, public sector owned and operated by government agencies, BHEL, SAIL, etc. Private sector industries owned and operated by individuals or a group of individuals. Tisco, Bajaj Auto Limited, Darbur Industries, Joint Sector Industries, which are jointly run by the state and individuals or a group of individuals. All India Limited is jointly owned by public and private sector. Cooperative sector industries are owned and cooperated by the producers or suppliers of raw materials, workers or both. They pool in the resources and share the profits or losses proportionately. Such examples are the sugar industry in Maharashtra, the Koya industry in Kerala. Based on the bulk and weight of raw material and finished goods, heavy industries such as iron and steel, light industries, 
that use light raw materials and produce light goods such as electrical goods industries agro based industries cotton jute silk wool and textiles sugar and edible oil etc industries are based on agricultural raw materials textile industry the textile industry occupies unique position in the indian economy because it contributes significantly to industrial production employment generation and foreign exchange earnings it is the only industry in the country which is self reliant and complete in the value chain that is from raw material to the highest value added products cotton textiles in ancient india cotton textiles were produced with hand spinning and hand loom weaving techniques after the 18th century power looms came into use all traditional industries suffered a setback during the colonial period because they could not compete with the mill made cloth from england The first successful textile mill was established in Mumbai in 1854. The two world wars were fought in Europe. India was a British colony. There was a demand for cloth in UK. Hence, they gave a boost to the development of the cotton textile industry. In the early years, the cotton textile industry was concentrated in the cotton growing belt of Maharashtra and Gujarat. availability of cotton market transport including accessible port facilities labor moist climate etc contributed towards its localization this industry has close links with agriculture and provides a living to farmers cotton ball pluckers and workers engaged in ginning spinning weaving dyeing designing packaging tailoring and sewing The industry by creating demands supports many other industries such as chemicals and dyes packaging materials and engineering works while spinning continues to be centralized in Maharashtra Gujarat and Tamil Nadu weaving is highly decentralized to provide scope for incorporating traditional skills and designs of weaving in cotton silk zari embroidery etc India has world class production in spinning but weaving supplies low quality of fabric as it cannot use much of the high quality yarn produced in the country weaving is done by hand loom power loom and in mills the hand spun khadi provides large scale employment to weavers in their homes as a cottage industry india exports yarn to japan other importers of Cotton goods from India are USA, UK, Russia, France, East European countries, Nepal, Singapore, Sri Lanka and African countries. We have a large share in the world trade of cotton yarn. Our spinning mills are competitive at the global level and capable of using all the fibers we produce. The weaving, knitting and processing units cannot use much of the high quality yarn that is produced in the country. There are some large and modern factories in these segments but most of the production is in fragmented small units which cater to the local market this mismatch is a major drawback for the industry as a result many of our spinners export cotton yarn while apparel and garment manufacturers have to import fabric suppose that yarn is sold at rupees 85 per kg If it is sold as a trouser it fetches rupees 800 per kg value is added at every stage from fiber to yarn to fabric and to garment although we have made significant increase in the production of good quality long staple cotton the need to import is still felt power supply is erratic and machinery needs to be upgraded in the weaving and processing sectors in particular other problems are the low output of labor and stiff competition within the synthetic fiber industry jute textiles india is the largest producer of raw jute and jute goods and stands at second place as an exporter after bangladesh most of the mills are located in west bengal mainly along the banks of the hugli river in a narrow belt The first jute mill was set up near Kolkata in 1855 at Trishra. After partition in 1947, the jute mills remained in India 
but three-fourth of the jute-producing area went to Bangladesh, erstwhile East Pakistan. Factors responsible for their location in the Hooghly Basin are proximity of the jute-producing areas, inexpensive water transport, supported by a good network of railways, roadways and waterways to facilitate movement of raw material to the mills, abundant water for processing raw jute, cheap labour from West Bengal and adjoining states of Bihar, Odisha and Uttar Pradesh. Kolkata, as a large urban centre, provides banking, insurance and port facilities for export of jute goods. Challenges faced by the industry include stiff competition in the international market from synthetic substitutes and from other competitors like Bangladesh, Brazil, Philippines, Egypt and Thailand. However, the internal demand has been on the increase due to the government policy of mandatory use of jute packaging. To stimulate demand, the products need to be diversified. The main markets are USA, Canada, Ghana, Saudi Arabia, UK and Australia. The growing global concern for environment-friendly, biodegradable materials has once again opened the opportunity for jute products. Sugar Industry India stands second as a world producer of sugar but occupies the first place in the production of gur and kansari. The raw material used in this industry is bulky and in haulage its sucrose content reduces. The mills are located in Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana and Madhya Pradesh. 60% mills are in Uttar Pradesh and Bihar. This industry is seasonal in nature, so it is ideally suited to the cooperative sector. Can you explain why this is so? In recent years, there is a tendency for the mills to shift and concentrate in the southern and western states, especially in Maharashtra. This is because the cane produced here has a higher sucrose content. The cooler climate also ensures a longer crushing season. Moreover, the cooperatives are more successful in these states. Major challenges include the seasonal nature of the industry, old and inefficient methods of production, transport delay in reaching cane to factories, and the need to maximize the use of bagues. Mineral-based industries Industries that use minerals and metals as raw materials are called mineral-based industries. Can you name some industries that would fall in this category? Iron and steel industry. The iron and steel industry is the basic industry since all the in other industries, heavy, medium and light, depend on it for their machinery. Steel is needed to manufacture a variety of engineering goods, construction material, defense, medical, telephonic, scientific equipment and a variety of consumer goods. Production and consumption of steel is often regarded as the index of a country's development. Iron and steel is a heavy industry because all the raw materials as well as finished goods are heavy and bulky, entailing heavy transportation costs. Iron ore, coking coal and limestone are required in the ratio of approximately 4 is to 2 is to 1. Some quantities of manganese are also required to harden the steel. Where should the steel plants be ideally located? Remember that the finished products also need an efficient transport network for their distribution to the markets and consumers. In 2018, with 106 million tons of crude steel production, India ranked third amongst the world crude steel producers. It is the largest producer of sponge iron. In 2018, per capita consumption, of steel in the country was only around 70.9 kg per annum against the world average of 224.5 kg. Many steel plants are smaller, have electric furnaces, use steel scrap and sponge iron. They have re-rollers that use steel ingots as well. They produce mild and alloy steel of given specifications. Processes of manufacture of steel Transport of raw material to plant Next, 
blast furnace iron ore is melted limestone is fluxing material which is added slag is removed coke is burned to heat the ore next pig iron molten materials poured into molds called pigs next steel making pig iron is further purified by melting and oxidizing the impurities manganese nickel chromium are added next and final shaping metal rolling pressing casting and forging an integrated steel plant is large handles everything in one complex from putting together raw material to steel making rolling and shaping most of the public sector undertakings market their steel through steel authority of india limited sale in the 1950s india and china produced almost the same quantity of steel today china is the largest producer of steel China is also the world's largest consumer of steel. Chota Nagpur Plateau region has the maximum concentration of iron and steel industries. It is largely because of the relative advantages this region has for the development of this industry. These include low cost of iron ore, high grade raw materials in proximity, cheap labor and vast growth potential in the home market. Though India is an important iron and steel producing country in the world yet we are not able to perform to our full potential largely due to a high costs and limited availability of coking coal b lower productivity of labor c irregular supply of energy and d poor infrastructure we also import good quality steel from other countries However, the overall production of steel is sufficient to meet our domestic demand. Liberalization and foreign direct investment have given a boost to the industry with the efforts of private entrepreneurs. There is a need to allocate resources for research and development to produce steel more competitively. Aluminium smelting Aluminium smelting is the second most important metallurgical industry in India. It is light, resistant to corrosion, a good conductor of heat, malleable and becomes strong when it is mixed with other metals. It is used to manufacture aircraft, utensils and wires. It has gained popularity as a substitute of steel, copper, zinc and lead in a number of industries. Aluminium smelting plants in the country are located in Odisha, West Bengal, Kerala, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Bauxite, the raw material used in the smelters is a very bulky, dark reddish colored rock. The flow chart given below shows the process of manufacturing aluminium. Regular supply of electricity and an assured source of raw material at minimum cost are the two prime factors for location of the industry. Four to six tons of bauxite, two tons of alumina gives one ton of aluminium. Process of manufacturing in aluminium industry: bauxite, the raw material bauxite quarry, is transported. through rail or ship alumina bauxite crushed and alumina dissolved out aluminum refinery one bulk ore shipped to site of smelter two calcinated petroleum coke from a refinery three pitch from a colliery cryolite a molten metal acts as an electrolyte aluminum smelter Electricity 18600 kilowatt hour per ton of ore. Chemical industries. The chemical industry in India is fast growing and diversifying. It compri- comprises both large and small scale manufacturing units. Rapid growth has been recorded in both inorganic and organic sectors. Inorganic chemicals include sulfuric acid used to manufacture fertilizers synthetic fibers plastics adhesives paints dyes stuffs nitric acid alkalis soda ash used to make glass soaps and detergents paper and caustic soda these industries are widely spread over the country 
Why do you think it's so? Organic chemicals include petrochemicals which are used for manufacturing of synthetic fibers, synthetic rubber, plastics, dye stuffs, drugs and pharmaceuticals. Organic chemical plants are located near oil refineries or petrochemical plants. The chemical industry is its own largest consumer. Basic chemicals undergo processing to further produce other chemicals that are used for industrial application, agriculture or directly for consumer markets. Make a list of the products you are aware of. Fertilizer industry The fertilizer industry is centered around the production of nitrogenous fertilizers, mainly urea, phosphatic fertilizers and ammonium phosphate. DAP and complex fertilizers which have a combination of nitrogen, phosphate and potash. The third that is potash is entirely imported as the country does not have any reserves or commercially usable potash or potassium compounds in any form. After the green revolution the industry expanded to several other parts of the country. Gujarat Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Punjab and Kerala contributes towards half of the fertilizer production. Other significant producers are Andhra Pradesh, Odisha, Rajasthan, Bihar, Maharashtra, Assam, West Bengal, Goa, Delhi, Madhya Pradesh and Karnataka. Cement Industry Cement is essential for construction activities such as building houses, factories, bridges, roads, airports, dams and for other commercial establishments. This industry requires bulky and heavy raw materials like limestone, silica and gypsum. Coal and electric power are needed apart from rail transportation. The industry has strategically located plants in Gujarat that have suitable access to the market in the Gulf countries. The first cement plant was set up in Chennai in 1904. After independence, the industry expanded. Improvement in the quality has found the produce a readily available market in East Asia, Middle East, Africa and South Asia apart from a large demand within the country. This industry is doing well in terms of production as well as export. Efforts are being made to generate adequate domestic demand and supply in order to sustain this industry. Automobile Industry Automobiles provide vehicles for quick transport of goods services and passengers, trucks, Buses, cars, motorcycles, scooters, three-wheelers and multi-utility vehicles are manufactured in India at various centers. After the liberalization, the coming in of new and contemporary models stimulated the demand for vehicles in the market, which led to the healthy growth of the industry including passenger cars, two- and three-wheelers. The industry is located around Delhi, Gurugram, Mumbai, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow, Indore, Hyderabad, Jamshedpur and Bengaluru. Information Technology and Electronics Industry The electronics industry covers a wide range of products from transistor sets to television, telephones, cellular telecom, telephone exchange, radars, computers and many other equipments required by the telecommunication industry. Bengaluru has emerged as the electronic capital of India. Other important centers for electronic goods are Mumbai, Delhi, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, Kolkata, Lucknow and Coimbatore. The major industry concentration is at Bengaluru, Noida, Mumbai, Chennai, Hyderabad and Pune. A major impact of this industry has been on employment generation. The continuing growth in the hardware and software is the key to the success of IT industry in India. Industrial Pollution and Environmental Degradation Although industries contribute significantly to India's economic growth and development, the increase in pollution of land, water, air, noise and resulting degradation of environment 
that they have caused cannot be overlooked. Industries are responsible for four types of pollution A. Air B. Water C. Land D. Noise The polluting industries also include thermal power plants. Air pollution is caused by the presence of high proportion of undesirable gases such as sulfur dioxide and carbon monoxide. Airborne particulate materials contain both solid and liquid particles like dust, sprays mist and smoke. Smoke is emitted by chemical and paper factories, brick kilns, refineries and smelting plants and burning of fossil fuels in big and small factories that ignore pollution norms. Toxic gas leaks can be very hazardous with long-term effects. Are you aware of the Bhopal gas tragedy that occurred? Air pollution adversely affects human health, animals, plants, buildings and the atmosphere as a whole. Water pollution is caused by organic and inorganic industrial wastes and effluents discharged into rivers. The main culprits in this regard are paper, pulp, chemical, textile and dyeing, petroleum refineries, tanneries and electroplating industries that let out dyes, detergents, acids, salts and heavy metals like lead and mercury, pesticides, fertilizers, synthetic chemicals with carbon, plastics and rubber etc. into the water bodies, fly ash, phosphor gypsum and iron and steel lag are the major solid wastes in India. Thermal pollution of water occurs when hot water from factories and thermal plants is drained into rivers and ponds before cooling. What would be the effect on aquatic life? Wastes from nuclear power plants, nuclear and weapon production facilities cause cancers, birth defects and miscarriages. Soil and water pollution are closely related. Dumping of wastes, especially glass, harmful chemicals, industrial effluents, packaging, salts, and garbage renders the soil useless. Rainwater percolates to the soil, carrying the pollutants to the ground, and the groundwater also gets contaminated. Noise pollution not only results in irritation and anger, it can also cause hearing impairment, increased heart rate and blood pressure, among other physiological effects. Unwanted sound is an irritant and a source of stress. Industrial and construction activities, machinery, factory equipment, generators, saws and pneumatic and electric drills are also make a lot of noise. Control of environmental degradation Every litre of what wastewater discharged by our industry pollutes eight times the quantity of fresh water. How can the industrial pollution of fresh water be reduced? Some suggestions are minimizing use water for processing by reusing and recycling it in two or more successive stages. 2. Harvesting of rainwater to meet water requirements. 3. Treating hot water and effluents before releasing them in rivers and ponds. Treatment of industrial effluents can be done in three phases. A. Primary treatment by mechanical means. This involves screening, grinding, flocculation, and sedimentation. B. Secondary treatment by biological processes. C. Tertiary treatment by biological, chemical, and physical processes. This involves recycling of wastewater. Overdrawing of groundwater reserves by industry where there is a threat to groundwater resources are also need to be regulated legally. Particulate matter in the air can be reduced by fitting smokestacks to factories with electrostatic precipitators, fabric filters, scrubbers and inertial separators. Smoke can be reduced by using oil or gas instead of coal in factories. Machinery and equipment can be used and generators should be fitted with silencers. Almost all machinery can be redesigned to increase energy efficiency and reduce noise. Noise-absorbing material may be used apart from personal use of earplugs 
and earphones. The challenge of sustainable development requires integration of economic development with environmental concerns. NTPC shows the way. NTPC is a major power providing corporation in India. It has ISO certification for EMS Environment Management System 14001. The corporation has a proactive approach for preserving the natural environment and resources like water, oil and gas and fuels in places where it is setting up power plants. This has been possible through a optimum utilization of equipment adopting latest techniques and upgrading existing equipment b minimizing waste generation by maximizing ash utilization c providing green belts for nurturing ecological balance and addressing the question of special purpose vehicles for afforestation d reducing environmental pollution through ash pond management ash water recycling system and liquid waste management E. Ecological monitoring reviews and online database management for all its power stations.